the last mile of COVID vaccine delivery from state capital to India's hinterlands. India aims to vaccinate 300 million people by July, a mammoth logistical challenge. Poor infrastructure, shoddy roads and traffic chaos stand between delivery drivers and patients. But supplying vaccines is one thing. Convincing people to take them is another. Someone told me that people are fainting. They're developing a fever and some are dying after taking the injection. That's why I was frightened. A survey indicates as many as 62% of Indians are reluctant to get the vaccine. We'll touch on that in a moment with Dr. Randeep Guleria, the author of the bestseller Till We Win, India's Fight Against the COVID-19 Pandemic. First, though, this report from DW's Manira Chowdhury. For 37-year-old Geeta Raj, it's a big day today. She is going to get her first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Geeta has been working as a nurse at a private hospital in Delhi for three years and has been a health worker for over 20 years now. As a health worker during the pandemic, she has been worried about the safety of her family against the virus. I had to take utmost care at home. There are little children in our family and I was concerned about their health. I had to stay in a separate room, keep my clothes and shoes separately, maintain proper hygiene, constantly use sanitizers. I had to take care of the smallest things. Geeta is one of the first in line in the country to receive the vaccine for the virus. India is in the middle of what is being called the world's largest COVID-19 immunization program. In the first round of the vaccine rollout, the government aims to vaccinate about 30 million health workers and other frontline workers. Two vaccines so far have been given emergency use approval by the country's drug regulatory authority, the Oxford AstraZeneca jab called Covishield in India and Covaxin, an indigenous vaccine developed by Bharat Biotech. But as the country takes a crucial step towards battling the pandemic, many concerns loom large. There are questions being raised on Covaxin getting approval from Indian authorities without its efficacy data in place, as its phase three trials are still underway. Some experts say that this is a break from established protocol and could lead to an atmosphere of distrust among people. Do hope the vaccine However, there's no clear consensus on this issue in the medical community. Dr. Virender S. Chauhan, a leading vaccinologist, says the approval to Covaxin has been given relying on the data of immunogenicity and safety. He says such emergency government approvals are not uncommon in unusual circumstances. Vaccines are given to masses. And masses have to accept the vaccine. The only way to accept what you say, I say, is to communicate better and transparent. Communication then Communication in the middle and communication now should not be confusing to people. Even though there are anxious voices regarding the emergency approval, many working in the healthcare sector are confident that vaccination is the right step to take. This is a highly contagious disease. So it was important for the vaccination to start. Geeta is now almost through the mandatory 30-minute observation period post-vaccination. She says she has started feeling more secure against the coronavirus and is eagerly awaiting the second dose. I'm now joined by Dr. Randi Kuleria. He's the director of All India Institute of Medical Sciences, a member of the country's COVID-19 task force. We heard earlier that 62% of Indians are hesitant to get the vaccine. Can you explain that skepticism? So I think vaccine hesitancy is there, which is a global phenomena, and it's there in India also. A lot of uh, uh, Indians want to get see others get the vaccine and get confidence that it is safe. Uh, it's picked up now, and now it's uh, crossed even 70%. So I think the first week of the vaccine rollout in India had a lot of hesitancy, uh, especially among healthcare workers. Uh, but now it has picked up, and I'm conf confident that it will continue to increase over the next few weeks. Well, it was the healthcare workers and the elderly who had to get vaccinated first, as opposed to younger working people who are usually more mobile. And I know half the population in India is under 25. Would that have been a better strategy for India? 
So this was looked at, and this is also as per WHO guidelines, that frontline workers and the elderly in whom the mortality is high uh, should be uh, would be vaccinated first. And this is basically to basically do two things. One is to decrease the mortality, and mortality was higher in the elderly and those with comorbidities, and therefore they became priority. And secondly, is to really motivate our healthcare workers, and and they are getting exposed because of the type of work that they're doing, the healthcare workers, the frontline workers and therefore to vaccinate them first. After that, we will move on to the younger age group. What about the, the spread of the virus, though, in, in parts of uh, the country that are so um, densely populated? So we've had uh, multiple spikes in the last, uh, last year, uh, two major spikes and another one. But currently, our cases are down. We are actually seeing a very low number of cases uh, in our country uh, now, and uh, it seems as if the worst is over. Also, our mortality is less. And if you actually look at the cases per million, uh, uh, then our numbers are very, very low. And I think India has actually done very well, both in terms of number of cases per million and our case fertility rate, which is also the lowest in the world. What about the speed of this actual uh, vaccine campaign? Uh, I, I know the infrastructure in, in India can be quite challenging. So we have a universal immunization program, which we run annually, um, uh, where we vaccinate uh, young uh, children and pregnant women. And that has been the backbone of the program that now is being done for vaccinating COVID-19. Um, a number of dry runs have been done to make sure that the cold chain is maintained. Uh, the vaccination, vaccinating sites are appropriate. Vaccinators have been trained to vaccinate individuals. And a COVID app has been created so that individuals can be sent a message that you are due for vaccination, they can come on that particular day. We have a huge task, even in the first uh, uh, task that we're going to do, we are actually having to vaccinate 300 million people. So that is a huge number of uh, people that we need to vaccinate even just in the first phase. And that is uh, equivalent to the population of many countries combined. But we are rolling it out and we're hopeful that we should be able to achieve it in the coming few months. How is India managing to do this? Uh, I know some people have to travel two days to get to a hospital, for example. Uh, considering those challenges, how is India managing to do such a good job, in, in your opinion, at least from what you're saying? So we, like I told you, we have a universal immunization program. We also have had a pulse polio program, which we've had over the last few years, and we've eliminated polio from India. We've also do, do a very aggressive election camp, election every, uh, every five years, and state elections are also held every five years. So using the same model, that uh, like the election model, we will have uh, vaccination sites in different areas, both urban and rural, in uh, colonies itself, and vaccinators will be trained there so that it's close to people's house and they can come and get themselves vaccinated. Briefly, finally, can you tell us when India will be fully vaccinated? That's a tough question. We have a huge number of uh, uh, people. We have more than 1.3 billion people. So it's going to take a huge uh, time. But I'm quite confident that at least a sufficient mass of people would be uh, vaccinated in the next seven to eight months or by the end of the year so that we say that we have some degree of good immunity in our population. The high risk group is protected so that they, our mortality is low. And combined with the degree of uh, cases that we have and the uh, uh, immunity occurring because of natural infection, I think we will have achieved some degree of herd immunity by, by the middle or end of this year. Dr. Randy Kuleria, thank you very much. Thank you. It's that part of the show where our science correspondent Derek Williams answers your questions on the coronavirus. 95% vaccine effectiveness. What does that mean? Are the other 5% of recipients partially protected or not protected at all? I agree that this statistic can be confusing. So let's look for a minute at exactly how Pfizer and BioNTech arrived at it uh, based on their data. Um, the companies enrolled over 40,000 subjects in what's called a double-blinded trial, which means uh, neither the participants nor the vaccine administrators knew who was getting the vaccine 
and who was getting a placebo. Um, subjects had a 50-50 chance of getting one or the other. Uh, they were of various ages from various countries and they were racially and, and ethnically diverse. Uh, after administration, it, it was a waiting game. The trial coordinators basically had to wait for participants to begin getting sick. Uh, when statistically relevant numbers of people got ill, uh, the results were evaluated. The coordinators looked to see how many people got sick in each of the two groups. When the initial results from the trial were published, it reported 170 symptomatic cases of COVID-19 among all trial participants, and, and 162 of them were in the placebo group, so 95% so of them. Among the vaccinated, only eight people had symptomatic COVID-19. So you could also say that for every one vaccinated person who got it, around 20 unvaccinated people did. And, and pretty much every group and age appeared for all intents and purposes to be protected pretty much equally. Um, on to the second question now. When they experienced symptoms of COVID-19, despite having received a vaccine, just how sick did those eight trial subjects get? Well, only one of them got it badly enough to require hospitalization. In the placebo group, nine people ended up in the hospital. So, so there was a dramatic impact there as well, indicating uh, pretty strongly that if you're vaccinated, there's a small chance that you might still get COVID-19 in spite of that, but also an extremely good chance that, that if you do, it'll be a mild case.